Well, we say good evening to everyone as we we're going we want to continue on with our uh, study of um, Ministry Development 302, where we're talking this session about the continuation of increased by association. One of the scriptures that we used in our last class was uh, Proverbs um, 13th, the 20th verse, and it says, he who walks with uh, the wise grow wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. And we begin to ask ask ourselves, what kind of people do we associate ourselves with? You know, who are we attached to? Is there anybody that we're attached to that may not that may not be able to help us to get where we need to be? So we want to continue on with our teaching talking about how the how the dictionary defines associates. Whenever we talk about associates, associates is uh, uh, anybody that is fre frequently in the company with you, they connect with you, or they're joined with you. Because one thing about it is that we need to make sure that people are joined, the right people are joined with us. Now, whenever we talk about the relationship between Moses and Joshua, we see that by association, something came into Joshua's life and that was increase. God told Moses, lay your hands on Joshua and put some of thine honor upon him. And what happened to Joshua? Increase came into his life. The man was a champion. He was the leader. We're talking about Joshua. He was a leader. He did great and mighty things for God. Uh, did he notice how close that he stuck to Moses? And this is one thing that we need to think about is this. Whenever God is wanting to put an increase in our lives, sometimes he will have us to associate with people who are going to be able to bring us into that part of our lives of increase. Because whenever we go back and we think about Moses and we think about Joshua, Mo Joshua was always not, behind, not far from Moses. He was always watching so that he could make sure that he was learning what, what needed to be done. And I like the part about whenever God spoke to Moses and he told Moses, lay your hands on Joshua and put some of your honor into Joshua. And this is what leaders do is that, that they lay hands on us and they put some of their honor in us so that we might be able to do what God is calling us to do. Because guess what? Leaders are being born every day. However, you have to work your way through the process. And we're talking about Joshua. Joshua was one of those people that did not want to go ahead of Moses. But guess what? He wanted to see what Moses was doing so that whenever he became into that leadership position, he would be able to, to, to do it and do it well. He saw the good, the bad, and the indifferent. And so he knew that if he um, knew he saw all three, and I did say good, bad, and indifferent, guess what? He would know through God's grace what to do and what not to do, because guess what? It had to do with association. If you walk with people who walk in, in a tremendous anointing, as in the illustration of Elisha and Elijah, we're talking about Elisha, the J, and Elisha, the S, then you will, in, then you will know what increase looks like too. By association, Elisha, received not only the same anointing that Elijah uh, got, but guess what? It was a double portion. There is another example that we want to look at by Chris talking about regarding financial prosperity. In Genesis 30, and I like this scripture, we have the story of Jacob, where he had worked uh, for seven years for Rachel. Laman gave Leah instead, and he worked another seven years to get Rachel. Now, Jacob is ready to go back to his homeland with his family. But in verse 27, it says, And Laman said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry. For I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. Did you get that? He says, don't leave too quickly. And sometimes that's what we'll do. We will sometimes leave too quickly. Sometimes we need to tarry around a little longer to see what God has for us to know and, and to learn. Because guess what? Experience sometimes can be the best teacher. But let's carry on with uh, Jacob. Now, Jacob says again in verse, verse 30, for it, for, is what it, for it was little which thou hast before I came. And it is now increased into a multitude. And the Lord has blessed thee, has blessed thee since my coming. And now when I shall, when when shall I provide for my own house also? Jacob is saying, increase came to Laman by association. Him just being there, Laman uh, was able to prosper. 
I encourage you sometimes to hang around places that you don't want to hang around. Hang around dreamers. Don't hang around these people that we talked about in the last lesson. You know, those who are slofers, those who always complain, those who always murmur, those who are always talking about, oh, I just can't, I'm just barely getting along. Oh, oh this, oh that, oh my, oh me, oh my. Don't hang around those kind of people. Hang around those people who are dreamers. Just like with Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King said, I have a dream. And his dream is still being manifested while we're still here right now. He had that dream and all those all those things came true and they continue to come true. But uh, don't run with folks uh, who don't have a dream. Don't even run with people who have lost the dream. Run again with dreamers and you'll be a dreamer. God will show you things in your dreams that you didn't ever think would manifest. And one thing about it, and I always go back to this, and I've talked about this in our previous lesson and the lesson before, you got to be like Habakkuk. You got to write the vision. You got to you gotta uh, make it plain. You got to write it on a tablet. And though the vision, Terry, wait on it. When God gives you dreams, and um, one thing that I learned early on uh, in ministry is that Always try to keep a tablet by your bedside. So when God begins to speak to you, you'll be able to write it down. Because guess what? God sometimes speaks to us in parts. Because the word of God says, for we will know in part. So God can give you part of a vision tonight. He can give you a part of vision tomorrow. Or he may maybe two or three weeks down the road and he'll give the rest of it. But guess what? You need to be a dreamer. You need to ask God to allow you to dream. You need to hang around people that are dreams because guess what? Heard someone say one time, run with the folks who know God better than you. Never be afraid to be around people who know more than you. If you're in a room, this is a caveat for this. If you're in a room and you think that you're the smartest one in the room, guess what? You're in the wrong room. Because if you hang around people who know just what you know, you always know what you know. Don't be afraid to hang around people who know more than you do because they're dreamers and they're aspiring to do, be greater. And guess what? That will rub off on you. Don't always try to impress, impress people with how much you know. Learn sometimes to take a uh, Be Quiet 101. Yes, that could be a subject that some people need to take. Be Quiet 101. One of the things you need to realize that when you're learning, you don't have to say everything. Whenever, just sit there and learn. I can only speak about myself. I uh, And I'm going to go off the cuff just for a hot minute, and I'm talking about introverts and extroverts. Whenever we talk about introverts, introverts think to talk. Extroverts talk to think. And then you have the ambivert of what they do, and that's what I can be sometimes whenever I'm in training, whatever, I'm an ambivert. If I am in a training session, I am there to learn. So therefore, you may not hear a lot from me. I'm always writing. I'm always writing. And then I'm able to go and take what I've learned and be able to disperse it wherever the God wants me to disperse it later on. And again, don't always try to impress people with what you know. Because if you hang around the right people, God will always let adopt, God will already let them know what you know. And so you don't have to always let it be a me, me, me song or either I, I, I song. Just let it just be what God wants it to be. And it's a learning experience for you. Run with folks who know more than you do. And that's what I just said earlier. Don't, don't, you know, God knows the end before the beginning. God knows how much he wants you to do. He knows how much he wants you to know. So all you got to do is trust him with everything that you have. And he will always put you among the right people. I am convinced that the reason some people never experience the blessings of ministry that they have been associated with is because they leave too quickly. Don't get disconnected. Don't get weary of well-doing because you're a reap if you think not. Don't get disconnected. Remember two words that I, well, one word in particular that I uh, shared with you all at the last, in, in our last class. It was stay focused. Stay focused. Now we're going to add another word. Don't disconnect. Do not disconnect. The Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians 1 and 6, he says, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Even as it meets for, for, for us to think that some of this may not happen, if we hold on to God, if we hold on to the heart of God, guess what? Everything is going to come around the way that God would have to come around. 
Uh, we got to be able to partner in ministry. And remember, we talked about it earlier, what a partner was. We talked about what the cha what challenges can be, can take place for partnership. We talked about all those kinds of things because the same grace that God gave the uh, the um, church in Philippi, guess what? He'll give that same grace to you. And what kind of grace are we talking about? The same grace that got a lot of people out of a lot of adversities in every impossible situation that same grace God will give to us. All we got to do is trust him in our ministries, do what God has called us to do, do to what God has placed in our hand, piggybacking on what was said earlier. Don't try to tr try to impress, impress people when you don't really know what you're doing. Learn how to ask questions because if you learn how to ask questions, ask them at the appropriate time, guess what? God will begin to mold you in the way that he would have you to be molded. If you, even if you have to go back down to the potter's house, get back on the wheel, and, and that's Old Testament, and let him reshape you, remake you into what he would have you to be. Do whatever is necessary in order to be that uh, ministry chair, that ministry head, that pastor, you know, that overseer, that deacon. And remember, we talked about that in the last class whenever we talked about who Paul was writing um, that um the, the first chapter of, of Philippians 2, he was talking to the whole congregation, but basically he was talking to the overseers and the deacons because they were going to have to be the ones to take this uh, mission out and to accomplish it according to the way that God had them to do. So remember this, don't try to be a one-man show. Do not try to be a one-man show. Again, learn to run with dreamers. Learn to know that you don't have to impress everybody that you know are wrong with folks who know more than you and know that God's grace was set on you and you'll be able to do great and marvelous things that you don't that you don't know that you can do. All right. Now let's continue on and talk about the fact of God's grace. The same grace again, like I said, um got um got Paul, you know, for the people for the children that were the for the people in the church at Philippi Strait that same grace is going to be afforded to you. Because I think that every member of the body of Christ needs to take inventory of who they are linked with. Again, going back to last the last class, who do you who are you associating with? You know what I'm saying? Who um who are you exposing yourself to? You know, um, who do you hang out around with? What are you saying when nobody is around? What are you doing? And remember, we're talking about uh, sometimes you have to disconnect from people. And I talked about the fact of an eagle and a uh, an eagle flies alone. He honestly does. He'll come down and get what is necessary, like in the water, fish, whatever, you know, for, for, for to make sure that he has stamina to do what he needs to do. He'll grab it. He'll go back up. But every now and then a crow will decide that they want to get on his back. And what a crow will do, a crow will get on his back. And he will keep pecking at his skin, keep pecking, pecking, pecking. Enough to think that the eagle's going to get tired. The eagle will try to shake it off. He may not be able to get him off all the way, but he'll keep shaking, shaking. But guess what he does? He keeps going higher. He keeps going higher. He keeps going higher. He keeps going higher. Soon the altitude gets so high that guess what? The crow just falls off. And that's what we need to think about. Those people who are not going the way we're going, those people within our ministries who are not, who don't have that same uh, mindset that we have. Guess what? Sometimes we have to just, just every round again, goes higher and higher and higher. And as we get higher and they cannot sustain what we're doing, guess what? They will fall off. They will fall off. So I think that's a good analogy for us to always remember about the eagle and the crow. Because again, everybody cannot go where you're going. Everybody cannot reach that, that altitude that, that God wants you to reach. But you got to be able to have that stamina. He's going to give you the grace to do it. But you got to have that stamina to stand. Because if you're linked with the right people, guess what? You're always going to have those people there to guide you and get you to where you need to go. Because we have been mistaken in thinking that just as long as we're sowing seeds, that we'll get a harvest. It's not sowing that produces the harvest, but, uh, but according to Mark 4, it's where you sow. It has everything to do with your harvest. Where are you sowing? Are you sowing in good ground? Are you sowing in ground that there that there is no fertile soil? 
Remember we talked last time, we said there is seed, that, that it goes in the ground, there's time for it to be able to permeate into the ground, permeate into the ground and get firm in the ground. And then there's harvest time. So whenever that 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 seed, you know, is fermented into the ground and then it, it comes back up, what is it producing? Have you put it into, into good soil? And this is what we need to think about. Remember, I talked to you about the fact that whenever we're planting ministries, or do we do our demographics? Do we plant ministries where God tells us to plant those ministries? Do we plant those ministries where there's place, there's, there's space enough for us to evangelize to do what God is calling us to do? Or do we plant, we plant those ministries in places where we think are the best for us? Because remember when we first started this class, we talked about whenever we develop ministries, we may have people that are coming to our ministries, coming to our churches, especially building it from the ground up or being placed into a ministry that has already uh, been grounded. People may not look like us and we're not just talking about color. And so what are we doing? Are we ready for that harvest? Because again, we talk about it. The harvest is plentiful. This is what Jesus said. The harvest is plentiful, but the labels are few. Who will come work for me? So finally, I want to ask you, do you want the maximum results on every seed that you sow. If you do, find ministries that are stable or establish ministries that are stable. Make sure that they're mature, they're consistent and full of integrity and ministries that bear good fruit. You gotta be a fruit inspector. You gotta make sure if you want your ministry to grow or if you're going into a ministry to help, make sure that that ministry is stable it is mature, it is consistent and full of integrity, and the ministry bears fruit. If you want maximum results, then sow into good ground. Do not sow into ground that is tainted. Do not do that. Sow into good ground. Uh, associate with great people. Hook up with good people. And again, hang around people who are increasing. Because who you associate with is going to determine what your destiny is going to look like. And this is something to think about. Like we talked about um, in the close of our last class. Again, we talk about how we, we may have to uh, disassociate ourselves with certain people who that may be hindering us from getting to where God would have us to be. Because guess what? We want to be where God wants us to be. We don't want to be any place else than where he wants us to be. And so we have to think about it. We got to count up the cost. Nehemiah counted up the cost with his friends. Whenever we think about uh, Joseph, whenever we think about uh, uh, Jacob, he counted up the cost seven more years so he could get uh, who he had who he had intended uh, to come for, for, which was Rachel. Whenever we think about the cost that... Um, when we think about Jack, we think about um, um, Code of Many Colors, um, we think about him. We think about all these people in the Bible, Joseph, thank you, Holy Spirit, Code of Many Colors, he had to count up the cost for him being the second in command in Egypt. We got to think about this in our ministries. What cost do we have to count up so that we could do ministry according to the way the Lord would have us to do it and be successful in it? Food for thought. So what we're gonna do whenever we come together with our next class, we're gonna be talking about leading by faith. And I feel like we're that's important. It's gonna bring us right around where we need to come to. Every round, like I shared with you earlier, goes higher and higher, higher and higher. Now we're talking about, we're gonna to to know how to lead by faith. So again, this has been an awesome opportunity for, for me to share um, the rest of our uh, class um, on increase and we're praying that you all took good notes uh, because guess what? We increase by association. Who are you hanging around with? Who has your ear? Who has your eye? Where are you planting your seeds? Are you planting in good soil? Can you see that increase? And if you cannot, guess what? You gotta refocus and detach yourself so that you can go where God wants you to go and do what God has chosen you to do. We love you and we'll see you on the next class. Good evening.